everybody. I, I am so excited. This is so funny. I mean, I was gone for six weeks, so I'm sure it's gonna take, I don't know, this is, this is so funny. I don't even know how many people are on this thing because I can't really see it because it's not my desktop. That said, I see a lot of you who, um, I'm so glad you're here because I know this is a, uh, you know, it's been, it's been six weeks and you guys, you probably really miss me. <laughs> I know I miss you. It's so funny because in re when my computer broke down, my desktop, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not a techie, okay? I'm just an anxiety guru. That's what I am. Okay, so forgive me for those of you who are techies because I am not. However, I have this huge um, desktop uh, that I use and it's an Apple iMac. Murray, I hope I'm saying this right now that I know that you're on there. And you know, it broke down and it's not that old and it frustrated the out of me. And I was trying to fix it. And I went through this weird thing this weekend about why am I even doing all this? You know, why am I doing all of this? <laughs> why do I do these podcasts and these Zoom calls and this coaching? And I thought, because I want to. Because it's not about, you know, anything other than the fact that um, when you do something to make other people feel better, it makes you feel better. And so, um, there's my daughter. You need to turn that ringer off. I gotta get back to this whole thing of, you know, putting it on airplane mode and everything I used to do. Anyway, so the theme tonight that we're gonna talk about, and I am so honored and excited that my fiance is here with us tonight. And uh, we just traveled around Italy and France together for six weeks. Some of you are on my Facebook account and you saw that and it was pretty amazing. And I, as many of you know, I'm small town chick from Ohio. <laughs> you know, I live by a railroad track. So for me to go off and take a trip like that was, and one of my clients called me today and her son's getting married this Sunday. And I said, this is your princess moment and thrive and, 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 you know, wallow in this wedding because we all deserve a princess moment. And this trip for me was a princess trip. And uh, Murray took me on this trip. And as you know, he's my fiance. And what was interesting to me um, when we were traveling and when I would occasionally check in on Facebook and Instagram were all these questions from people saying, um, you know, why, how are you traveling? What's it like over there? What's COVID like? I even had, you know, one of my clients um, email me today and say, hey, we're getting ready to take a trip. Tell us where to go. Um, what are the restrictions with regard to um, tests? Do you have to be vaccinated? And so that's what we're here to discuss tonight mainly is how do you travel abroad right now? with this whole COVID experience that we're all going through and do it properly and do it safely. And so I'm gonna give you some tips and I'm gonna bring Murray in so you get to, <laughs> I don't know if he wants to be on camera, but he's, you know, he's a doctor and he is the medical director for COVID uh, Unified Schools and, and the testing program. He's involved with that. And so obviously he wasn't gonna take any chances with us. We were vaccinated, I do wanna tell you that. Um, I think, you know, when I think about the things that were interesting to me, one of the things I, I find very interesting, and, and by the way, um, some of you might be anti-vaxxers and that's fine. Um, everybody has their own right to choose, okay? But one of the things that was, I think, extremely helpful for us is that we were vaccinated and we had those vax cards because uh, it becomes a very important part of your traveling experience in Italy and France. And that's all we can speak about because those were the only countries we visited. However, everywhere we went, whether it was a store or a restaurant, everybody wanted to see the VAX card. All the, air, all the airlines wanted to see the VAX card. Um, so, you know, that's a very important part of the experience. That doesn't mean that you can't be tested every 72 hours and test negative for COVID and still get on a plane because you also have to do that anyway. And there are a lot of different ways to do that. Um, so we can talk about that tonight. Um, but you know, it's interesting. I think um, one of the most interesting things to me is that when we got to Italy and France, 
there's a shortage of masks. I mean, it's not like America where, or the United States where you walk into a hair salon, if you don't have a mask, they hand you one. So, you know, one of the things you really wanna do is take a bag of those little black paper masks or whatever you prefer um, with you so that you have plenty of masks because you will not be finding them over there and they will not be handing them to you in restaurants. And they will be testing your, um, your vax card. So if you don't get the vax card, be prepared to go to a laboratory because those self-tests aren't good enough, by the way. They're not good enough to fly with and they're not good enough to walk into a restaurant with, I don't think. Um, so you have to go to a pharmacy or somewhere like that and get a lab test. It's the up the nose test. It could take 72 hours. Um, some of the, the pharmacies that we visited in Paris, for example, they could email your results within 12 hours. So there are a lot of options. Um, so what I want to talk to you about is, you know, some of you are saying, well, how did you even make that decision? I've had clients say, I'm just really scared to go there. But the truth of the matter is, and I really would like to bring Murray on if he's willing to come on. <laughs> Let me find him on here. Okay. There, you. there you are. Okay. Did you are see you me on? or just hear me? Yes. Did you unmic yourself? Yes, I did. Um, somebody tell me if you can hear Murray. Text me, Darla. Hey. Anybody? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Norma uh, can hear me. Okay, then you're on. So this this gentleman, you need we need more light on your face, Murray Laffy. I do. <laughs> A little more light on your face. This is my gorgeous fiance, and he gets embarrassed because he's very humble. And I just got a message that said, guess I won't be traveling to Europe, Europe for quite some time. Now that's not necessarily true. I'm assuming that the reason that you said that is because you're not vaccinated. And, and, and that's, that's your choice. Oh, Jason, I'm so excited you're here, yay. Um, first of all, before we go any further, I wanna introduce this beautiful man in front of you. I don't know if you can see him. Did you, un I think you're good. Yep, okay. Is I see me. Very nice to see you. This is my beautiful fiance that I'm so crazy about. I talk about all the time, Dr. Murray Laffey. And he is, um, he is the head of, well, he's not the head, but he is the medical director uh, and a consultant for LA Unified COVID program. And it's a big deal. And they've gone through a lot and he has been responsible for a lot of how well they're doing now. And so I'm really proud of him. It's been a lot of work and a tough year. And he's very calm and he is, you know, uh, if he stays very calm, he'd have to be, be dating me. <laughs> that said, he's a doctor. So if you guys want to uh, throw some questions up there, um, I will try very hard to read them on my chat. And Murray is, you, you feel free to ask him questions, but um, I think what was interesting for both of us, Murray, and, and feel free to jump in, is that um, we had to make that decision to go to Europe. And we made the decision because you looked at the numbers and you realized, and I'm just throwing this out there and I want you to correct me or say, your, say it in your own way, but then the numbers were lower in Europe. And so we felt because we were vaccinated and we, weren't, we were going mostly to small areas and we were going to be careful and we took baths that we were going to take that chance. And, um, and if anything happened, we would come back. And um, I think we were surprised that when we got, and also Murray did some research and said, you know what, the numbers are really lower over there. Would you like to pick up on yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at the statistics uh, for COVID, the prevalence rates in Italy and France. And, and what I found was that there are some cities where it was more risky, like Rome uh, and Milan, and we decided to stay out of those areas. But the other cities that, that we visited had much lower rates of COVID than there are where we live in Los Angeles. And so in, in many ways, we felt safer and, and more comfortable moving around, eating out in restaurants, um and just being out in public than uh than, than we do at home so and and they're very strict you know there are ordinances in a lot of the cities that we're in where you have to mask indoors and outdoors 
you can't walk down the street without a mask. And um, I actually got tagged by uh, by a cop or two. Uh, <laughs> because I didn't, For smoking didn't weed in public. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> because I didn't have a mask on. Exactly. Everyone wears masks everywhere in Europe. And the other thing that was interesting, and by the way, we're going to joke because we joke with each other all the time. So, you know, go with it. <laughs> But what was really cute, there were many, many cute experiences, but um, I went into a hair salon and this is what you have to be prepared for. And I didn't, I, I think because sometimes when you're vaccinated, you don't feel like you're at risk. And we went into a hair salon there and I went, oh my gosh, I forgot my mask. They didn't have a mask. And we were in Capri, right? And Murray went, he goes, I'll be right back. I'll get you a mask. And he was gone for like an hour. <laughs> they, don't, they only sell them in pharmacies. Right. And so and that the pharmacies was... are closed for <laughs> like siesta from like one to four. Right. So uh, there was only one open pharmacy on the whole island. So by the time he got back to me, he had lost 15 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, yeah. and, you, and your blowout was done. In my book, because the woman beside me, bless her heart, pulled a mask out of her purse that was in a little bag. And she goes, in some kind of French or no Italian, she said, You can have this mask. I said, Thank God, because they're very strict over there. They will not let you enter restaurants. They, the, everywhere you go in Italy and France, they ask for the Vax card. And when we left for our flight, we didn't need to be vaccinated before we left the United States, but now I believe you do. And when we flew back from Paris to the United States, we had to have that 70, 72 hour um, lab test where they go up your nose and Murray found a lab that we walked to in Paris and we got the results on our, um, on our phone, like I think within 12 hours, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think, if, if you want to go, the good news is, you know, there, we, we had so much fun. Everyone in Italy and France was so gracious. And, um, every, but, you know, I will say, and I'm not, I'm not saying you need to be vaccinated. And I, 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 this is, you guys are saying so many cute things here. It's very sweet. Murray, they're saying that we hit the jackpot finding each other on Tinder, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> we did. I did. I, oh, did. I did for sure. But the thing that was interesting, too, is that um, the planes weren't full. The airports were kind of quiet um, when we flew from Nice to Paris. Did we need when we flew from Nice to Paris, we didn't need to have um, a negative um, vaccine test? It was, a, it was a domestic flight. So I think uh, there wasn't a requirement. Right. Right. So I've, I've been asked that. Somebody's asking me that right now. I think, Murray, I lost you on your video for some reason. You know. did. Yeah, there you're back. Okay. So okay. we don't know for sure because we didn't really go. I had someone asking me about Israel and other places. And we stayed in Europe and we ended up flying. The only, the only flight we took was from Nice to Paris. And we didn't need, the va we didn't need to have the vaccine test. However... Uh, the negative vaccine test. We did need, I do believe we had to show our vax um, cards, didn't we? Oh yeah, for we sure. Had everywhere we went. Yeah. So if you are an anti-vaxxer and believe me, that's, that's okay. It's a choice that you make, but traveling to Europe is going to be a little more difficult. I, I think you can do it. You just have to get the, the, the test, which now you're going to have to get anyway. If you leave the United States and you want to fly abroad, you've got to get the test anyway with that 72 hour test. And no, if you're saying, why can I do the self-test? No, the self-test don't fly, okay? So if you think you're gonna go to CVS and pick up one of those self-tests and do it yourself, that won't work at the airport. And I don't believe that will work. Um, I don't know, that might work at a restaurant in Europe, but I don't, I don't know because we didn't go through it because we had our Vax cards. We did meet up with a friend of mine who is French, who is not vaccinated, right, Murray? And she, we were shocked because she- oh, yeah. Right. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. <laughs> well, she, you know, there's a there's a green pass uh, in France, so everyone has to carry on their phone this national COVID pass. And if you're vaccinated, 
it's, you know, barcoded. Um, but if you're not vaccinated, you have to be tested every 72 hours. And so she's in the country for months and she gets a test every 72 hours. And, 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 and that's not easy to do. It's not hard to do because she happens to live in Paris. But the problem is you've got to go find a laboratory or a pharmacy. I don't know if pharmacies do it over there. Do you know, Marie? I know we had to go the to a pharmacies laboratory. send them out, but they don't guarantee you um, 72 hour, you know, 48 hour. We, we needed results within 24 hours. So we had to go to, directly to the lab. And then you stand in line and you show them your stuff and then they give you the swab up the nose and then you get the results on your phone. So the other thing that we did that I've been asked about is crossing the border. So we drove, we made the choice and Marie made the choice, which I loved. Um, and Marie, you're off, there you are. We decided to drive a lot. So we rented a car and we threw 12 bags into a Volkswagen. Okay, I know that sounds hard to believe, but we did it. <laughs> And we drove, we drove all over Italy and it was fun. We listened to books on tape and we laughed and we, got, we, we were out in some little towns and we saw the countryside. And when we drove from Italy to France, we wondered, you know, are they gonna check our VAX card? Are we gonna need to have, you know, a test? But we crossed the border and there was no, no issue. Yeah, it's the EU and you can cross from one country to another without a border stop or immigration. You don't even know you're actually crossing the border, right. except for maybe a sign. And uh, there were no problems moving from country to country by car. But if you're flying internationally, you will need to be either vaccinated or tested. Yes. So if you're someone who is not vaccinated, you can still go. That's the good news. You're just, you just need to be prepared that you know, you're gonna to have to have that test before you go from a pharmacy or a laboratory. And then when you get over there, every 72 hours, you're gonna to have to go find a laboratory and get yourself retested. And you're gonna have to be able to show those results to restaurants, museums, everywhere you go, stores. Every store, every restaurant, every museum is gonna want you to have a mask on. And, and, and as I said, masks are not easy to come by. So make sure you get a pack of them or three packs of them and you know, take them with you. So they're at your, they're at, they're not at your disposal, but you have them at hand if you need them. The other thing I wanna point out that I think we both found really, really exciting and interesting is because there's not a lot of people there right now, every, and we are particularly good looking. <laughs> I'm joking, Marie's going, oh God, here she goes. But anyway, um, everywhere they, we went, they upgraded us, didn't they? I mean, yep. we, we would walk They were in, so they glad to see American tourists because they, you know, a lot of the hotels and restaurants have been closed for a year. Or longer. So yeah. they were really glad to see us. And so as a result, it's, it's, I think it's a little easier to get rooms and I think you get the, a better deal on your rooms. And when you get there, they upgrade you. And I mean, they upgrade you. And we're nobody special. I mean, we don't really think we are. <laughs> but, you know, we're cute together, that's for sure. But um, almost every hotel um, that we checked into, and this is someone saying, by the way, it's the same here in the States, in Miami, when we showed up, they upgraded us. So I think if you ever... I want to say this, if you ever wanted to go to Europe, you don't have to be rich and you don't have to be vaccinated. You know, that's always helpful if you have money and you're vaccinated. But the truth of the matter is, I think this is a good time to go because um, I think there aren't as many people there. The weather was beautiful, wasn't it? We were, I think we were shocked that at the end of August and September, it was like 80 degrees and beautiful weather everywhere. People were so friendly. And we got the best rooms in the house because there's nobody there. So um, if- And if there were no lines at any of the museums, hardly. I yeah. think it, the only line we saw was um, in Florence at the David, there was a line, but um, you can go online and get fast pass tickets. Um, and every other museum we went to, we got right in. Right, right. And I, I think, um, I think you're going to find some things are closed. Like 
the restaurant at the Eiffel Tower was closed. I mean, there are things that are going to be closed and you just have to be okay with that and expect that and go, oh, it's probably COVID. But for the most part, most of the museums were open. Um, there were actually concerts. We were fortunate enough to enter into this beautiful church. Where was that at? Paris Saint-Chapelle. Yeah, and and we and there were violinists and this amazing opera singer and um, we it was the most beautiful concert and um, and everywhere we went we were treated really 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 fabulously I mean we were people were so excited to see us back and we went to the probably the busiest cities we went to we did go to Venice and we did go to Paris and we did go to Florence but um, Florence was pretty. I don't know, it just felt kind of relaxed and beautiful. And um, I think the traveling by car is a really great option. You can really get around uh, Europe by car pretty easily. We we drove from the Venice area to Saint-Tropez, right? Yeah. And um, we did it in one day. Uh, well, we actually stopped in, in Monte Carlo one night. And I think what you really have to do if you want to do this is go with an open mind um, if you're not vaccinated, no, you're going to have to be tested every three days. If you are vaccinated, it will be, if, honestly, I think it'll be a pretty easy, easy trip for you because it's, take that vax card because you're going to have to show it and you're going to have to show it a lot and just take a lot of masks and, and, um, and be prepared to wear a mask in, you know, outside. But once you get in, you take your mask off, just like here, and you, you're very comfortable in the restaurants. Um, you can sit in a concert. Um, people are the one thing the one thing they prohibited in Monte Carlo was no dancing at the bar remember I remember that was a bummer too because we were ready yeah. to party <laughs> yeah we we, we were... got up to dance and they said you got to sit down there's no dancing. New, new, new. <laughs> um, we had a lot of fun though we um we wandered into places where we shouldn't have been at certain times <laughs> But just but nowhere you know the one thing that we did do kind of is we we avoided crowded areas we didn't go to some big sports event but hey they're going to sports events over here you guys so i mean um it's it's just a personal choice for you that you have to make but we we kind of we thought, did you know we avoided trains and that's something yeah. i'd recommend that if you know it until things settle down a little bit uh if at all possible, I would suggest not traveling by train. I agree. And that's also why we didn't fly from Venice to uh, Naples or not Naples to um, nice. nice because yeah. we, we made the decision. We wanted to be on as few small commuter planes or whatever you want to call those planes as possible, local planes. So we made the decision, you know what? We're going to drive everywhere. And even though that sounds a little overwhelming, we, we took books on tape and we had great conversations and, you know, we decided to break the trip up a little bit. We had ridiculous suitcases, but we made it work and it was an adventure. It was an adventure of a lifetime. And um, if you're thinking about going, this, this is a really good time to go. And I think you'll find hotels are more affordable. You might even find flights more affordable. Um, it was funny when we got to Nice and we flew to Paris, the, the airport at Nice was empty, wasn't it? I mean, we were, it was, it was spooky. It was so empty, but it was comfortable. And, um, and then we flew to Paris and there weren't that many people on the flight and Paris was, uh, it was interesting. You know, we were in Venice during, was it fashion week or film? What was it? It was the Venice film, film festival. festival. Yeah, nobody, there was nobody there. I know you saw. You guys have all seen video of J Lo and Ben Aff. Whatever is Affleck? What is it? Ben. <laughs> anyway, they might have been there. We didn't see them. We were there during that festival, and there was nobody there. And the good news is, you know, you can get boats and you can get restaurants. Um, the bad news is, I think a lot of people aren't traveling right now. A hundred thousand people attended college games in the past few weeks in the United States no breakouts. So there you go. Um, Murray, can you speak to, uh, since we have, since we all have the honor of your gorgeous face and your presence, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. By the way, this man is amazing and he makes me so happy and I love him so much. Um, so I want you to share with us because I am getting these questions and 
I'm not a doctor, although I might play one on my podcast. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I always tell you, I'm not a doctor, uh, but I'm engaged to a doctor and he knows um, he's, he's someone that really keeps up on all of the happenings and what's going on with COVID. So what is going on with COVID? Where are we at right now? Um, how is it affecting us in the United States in general? You know, um, our breakouts down, are we seeing a drop in hospitalization and deaths? What's, what's happening? Well, we're seeing a drop in everything. Um, the Delta variant, is essentially 100% of all infections today. And that caught all of us off guard in June because things looked really good uh, in June. And all of a sudden we had a couple of cases of the Delta variant and then it started to double you know, within two weeks and then it started doubling within a week and then it started doubling within a couple of days and in a rel relatively short amount of time every new COVID infection was the Delta variant and uh, that's what caused this latest surge which peaked about two weeks ago and is now on the downswing. So all of the numbers week over week are declining, infections are declining dramatically by 30 percent um, in the last two weeks, uh, hospitalizations are down, deaths are down. So it looks like we are coming to the end of this surge and there's no anticipated new variants or expectations that there's going to be uh, another major surge. There will likely be a minor surge over the holidays. Um, but it'll be minor because, you know, 60% of the population is vaccinated. And um, that's really, really helping keep transmissibility down. And so, um, uh, and it's also keeping hospitalizations and deaths down. Someone just uh, asked me, um, well, the mandates that we're seeing here in the United States and in traveling to abroad, Will they be in effect forever because of the variants that will be coming possibly over the next year, few years? Well, I doubt it. I think the mandates will exist for um, most people only during this emergency declaration. Uh, they will mandate COVID vaccines for children the way they mandate other vaccines for children. And so it'll be a requirement for school entry, just the way, you know, measles and rubella and chicken pox and diphtheria, et cetera, are, are mandated vaccines. Uh, but there are relatively few adult mandates, you know, maybe for hospital workers uh, and a few other occupational um, mandates, but there won't be the kind of mandates that you see now, workplace mandates for the general population. That's political. It's political to, you know, get the economy uh, restarted. So I, I guess the question is, how long do you think this is going to go on where you're gonna to have to prove that you've had the COVID test before you get on a plane um, you know, a negative COVID test. So you're going to wear a mask on a plane. You have, do you think this is going to go on? Do you think this is permanent? Yeah, COVID is with us forever. Yeah. We're, this is not going away entirely. I think the emergency declaration will likely last at least another year until, um, you know, we have the uh, hospitalizations well under control. And until um, the children, you know, five to 11 year olds and two to five year old um, vaccine approvals uh, occur and, and we expect the five to 11 approvals to start next month. Oh. Um, and uh, then the two to five year olds will come, you know, probably after the first of the year and it'll take 
a good six months to vaccinate children. Uh, and I think that will, um, starting in the summer, really change the course of COVID transmission in the U.S. And, you know, uh, we could get into a conversation here about, well, what about the, the, the parents that don't want to vaccinate a five-year-old for COVID? But that's not really what we want to get into here. What we, what we really want to do at this time is try to give people reassurance that COVID is at some point, it, we're going we're gonna to live with it, kind of like we live with the flu. You'll make the choice whether or not you want to get vaccinated. You'll make the choice whether or not you want to get your children vaccinated. Um, and you there'll, make- be, there'll be annual boosters like flu shots for COVID. So my next you, know, you may take a, a multivalent you know, flu shot that includes COVID or they're separate, but it'll be just like an annual you know, vaccine that you can choose to take or not. So what about natural immunity? Is that something that can happen? Herd immunity, I'm getting asked these questions. That's why I'm asking. Na- natural immunity happens after you're infected. Um, herd immunity happens when a large enough percentage of the population is infected that the transmission rate drops below one so that um, it's not increasing so that one person doesn't pass along the infection to more than one other person. And so the prevalence of the uh, pandemic is on a downward trend instead of, you know, growing. So I think, again, you know, the purpose of this of this Zoom forum tonight is I want to reassure everybody, we we want to reassure everybody that we look, we were just there for six weeks. We were in Europe for six weeks. We were only in Italy and France. So that's all that we can speak to because we didn't go anywhere else. But from what we experienced over there and the flights that we took, um, you know, I've had people say, I think I'm going to have anxiety if I have to be on a plane for 12 hours with a mask on. Well, you don't because if you're eating or drinking, you know, your mask is off. So, and you're going to be eating and drinking on a 12 hour flight to Europe. So don't, don't have anxiety that you're going to be stuck on a plane for 12 hours with a mask on your face because we weren't. And in fact, I mean, I think we had it down quite a bit of the time because you're eating and you're drinking and then you're sleeping. So, you know, it's not really an issue. And, and um, as far as getting over there and the prevalence, the prevalence is lower there. So your risk there in some bizarre way, as Marie mentioned, feels you know, less aggressive and more comfortable than here. And um, I don't think there was, there was only one time when we felt at risk. You wanna you remember that time? We felt like, ah, this is a little uncomfortable. This is pushing it. We didn't really expect that to be that I way. I remember having, I, where was it? We were, we left Capri. And we got on a... Oh, we were on a ferry. Oh, yeah. my God. We got on this ferry, and it was, pa- I mean, packed. I mean, there were probably 300 people on that ferry. I yeah. mean, we didn't expect it. And it was one of those random ferries, right? And we had, like, 12 pieces of yeah. luggage. And that's, that's why I say public, you know, any kind of public transportation uh, should be avoided. You know, we didn't go on the metro in Paris. Right. We didn't go any on any trains from, you know... Uh, Naples to Florence or to Venice, we drove instead. Um, so try to avoid public transportation. And the other thing I would encourage you to avoid is overpacking. <laughs> God, <laughs> poor Murray. I took like, you know, I don't know, five months worth of clothes. <laughs> Women, ladies, could you please explain that this is how we operate, that we take way too many clothes just in case? I mean, I don't know. I mean, oh my God, I think, what do we have, 10 bags or 12 bags? <laughs> Mostly my stuff, by the way, which I don't think I even wore a third of it. And so here we were dragging these bags because people tried to warn us. That, and I would, I would encourage you to underpack I would also never do not take heels, ladies, which I only took one pair, but I never wore them because you're in tennis shoes the whole time. Um, And the other thing our friends tried to encourage us not to do was don't stay in one hotel for just one night. 
it, it's, a, it's just too much. And so we went to a lot of places. I mean, what, we went to six different places. I, I, I don't know right now, I'm just throwing it out there, but I know that we, we went to five or six different locations and we drove to most of them. We only flew from Nice to Paris, then we were in Paris for 10 days. And it was, it was a lot. We personally really enjoyed it. And it was an adventure. And um, I think you need to underpack, take a lot of masks, um, make sure you're prepared with your tests that are from a laboratory or from um, a pharmacy here, going over there knowing that you need to either have a VAX card or you're gonna get tested every 72 hours <laughs> and you can't do self test, that's not gonna work. And, and so if you're prepared, you'll have a fabulous time. You know, we didn't really use a lot of hand sanitizer. Um, there was hand sanitizer everywhere we went, but that didn't see, and people were wiping, when I went into a salon to get a blowout, people wiped down the chairs. Um, they're not doing that at every restaurant, I don't think. All the, all the stores made us disinfect when we came in, remember? That's true. Every single store had disinfectant. We had to disinfect our hands. You had to have a mask on. Um, so make sure you do have a, a, a lot of masks. Jody had a question about, about vaccination after COVID. Okay. Um, so when you get a COVID infection, you have natural immunity for, you know, well over six months. And actually the immunity is stronger after an infection than it is from the vaccine but you can actually get vaccinated anytime, um, even after having a COVID infection. You don't need it for at least six months, but you can get it anytime. So um, we have one more. So around 30% of the US population have had COVID, perhaps 60% have had the shot. Are we not at herd immunity now? Well, there's overlap. It's not 30 plus 60. Um, and, you know, a lot of the people who had COVID are also vaccinated. Um, but the herd immunity is also a function of how contagious the virus is. And when we had the alpha wild type, the original strain, um, it had a lower transmissibility than the Delta variant. So once the Delta variant came around, the percentage of the population necessary to reach herd immunity went up. And so the original projections, which was 70% of the population is probably now closer to 80 to 90% to reach herd immunity. So I think the overall good news here is that we do seem to be getting this under control here in the United States and abroad. And, and the other good news is that traveling, whether it's Miami, New York, New York. or Paris. Yeah. Um, I don't suffer anymore. Are you there, Marie? I'm here. Okay, I don't know what that was. Somebody's... That was Chris. That was oh, Chris. Chris. Chris, you gotta turn your mic off. My, so my point is, um, the bottom line is, and the important information that you're getting tonight is that things are getting better, things are improving. It's getting more safe to travel. If you've ever wanted to take a trip, now is not a bad time to go. Um, and if you wanted to go to Europe, the options are open for you. Um, they are opened armed over there and they're very welcoming and you can probably get some really good deals right now on rooms, on flights, and you're traveling at a time when the weather is beautiful and there aren't as many people there. So um, it is fashion week, I think. And is it fashion week in Paris or is that gone now? <laughs> I don't know, your sister-in-law was telling us about that. But so, so that's it. I, I just really wanted to share that with you. I wanted to say that I am so excited to be back here and I'm so excited that Marie joined us tonight because um, he's grounded and he's, you know, he's, he's, he's calm. And he's been, you know, in the thick of all of this, this terrible experience since the very beginning. And I'm so proud of him for getting LA unified through a very, a very challenging experience. And he was the, you know, the calm, the eye of the storm, you know, keeping everybody grounded. And, 
And he kept me grounded. I mean, the only thing that got me going over there was I don't like turbulence, as all of you know. <laughs> and when that plane starts doing this, I'm like, ah, you know, but he kind of talks me through that and makes me laugh and everything's cool. All right. So um, I'm going to ask Marie to turn his camera off and his mic off. And we're going to do a breathing session for one song. Marie, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I didn't get to do that before you left, but I know you can hear me. Um, isn't he beautiful? I, I'm so proud of him. And um, he's a very special man. And uh, I asked him if he would join us tonight because what, what I'm trying to accomplish is... Um, should have put this on airplane mode. You guys give me a minute just because I have to get myself back into the groove here. I've got all these people texting me. Um, the goal tonight was for me to help you understand that things are getting better. And no, we can't, you know, politically speaking, we can't control what's happening politically, okay? We can't control the oil spill that just happened in Orange County. There are things that are happening in this world right now that you have no control over. And the only thing you have control over is you. And, um, and in fact, Murray sent me a quote, he texted me a quote uh, that I loved that I'm wondering if I can find. Um, oh God, everybody's sending me. Anyway, I can find this. I love this. Everybody's um, heard, um, well, maybe I can't find it. Yes, I can find it, hold on. Uh, Maybe I can't find it. Um, hold on, I'm looking for it. It's worth finding. Nope, I can't find it. Anyway, oh, you guys, Murray, can you resend it? Where is it? That really cool quote that you sent me. I'll find it. Be patient. It's worth hearing. So we've all heard the Serenity Prayer, and so Murray sent me this, which I loved. If I can find it. For some reason, I'm not finding it. Murray, resend it if you're listening. I don't know why it's not here. Anyway, uh, I want to share it with you guys. And for some reason, it's just not coming to me. All right, you know what? I guess I have to share it next week. It seems to be missing unless Murray re-texts it really quickly. Oh, boy. It's really bothering me because I want to share it with you. Hmm. Nope, can't find it. Anyway, all right. So the point is, you know, you can't control other people. You can't change other people. You can't control what's happening in the world around you. I know a lot of you are frustrated right now. I know a lot of you have, you know, are anti-vaxxers. Maybe you don't want to get the vaccination. Maybe you have, you know, um, theories about why you think this is even happening to us. I understand all those frustrations, but what I wanted to talk to you about tonight is that I just took three weeks and have, and had a trip of a lifetime thanks to this wonderful man that I'm engaged to. And, and the fact that I was willing to go, I, I really appreciated somebody sent me something on the last Zoom and said there was a time when that would have been really hard on you and you would have been scared to go. And you know, I would have been scared to go maybe even a year and a half ago after I got hit by the truck. And so I want to encourage you that, you know, like that song says, you know, if you get the chance to sit it out or dance, I hope you'll dance. I hope you'll get up and, and enjoy life and, and be present and be grateful that you're here. And that's the last thing that I wanted to talk about briefly is this thing about mirroring, you know, it's like, you know, what are you putting out there? Are you putting out fear and, and judgment? And are you anticipating negative things? And are you overthinking? And are you, um, you know, are you, um, are you not, you have these ridiculous expectations? Um, are you panicking? Are you, are you paranoid? Because whatever you're putting, are you judging other people? Because whatever you're throwing out there is going to mirror itself back at you. So I really encourage you to put positive feelings out there and encourage other people, compliment other people, see life as a joyous experience, be grateful for your health, be grateful for the love in your life. 
Tell people how wonderful they are. Tell them how much you love them. Put out good energy and that's what's going to be mirrored back to you. The energy that you put out is, and I'm so, I apologize to those of you I'm letting in at the last moment or whatever, um, but the energy you put out is the energy you're going to get back. So open yourself up right now to the possibilities of a trip to Miami or a trip to New York or a trip to Ohio or a trip to see your grandchildren that you haven't seen for six months or a year, or, or maybe a trip to Europe that you've never taken. I, and somebody, um, Murray, they're saying thank you as, as I'm sure you're seeing, but um, you know, there, we've all been incubated and living in a bubble for the last year and a half or more. And I think the world is opening up and there's no, but if not now, when, you know, that's one of the things that Murray and I say, you know, we're 65 years old and we found each other on a dating site and I adore him and I'm pretty sure he adores me. And is it always perfect? No. And is life always easy? No. And was that trip to Europe a big risk for us? Maybe, but we felt that the risk sometimes you got to the way the risk, Murray says, the risk is it worth the reward? And for us, it was, you know, I almost died of a truck. We could die tomorrow. You know, and when he said, let's go, let's run away and go play for, you know, it turned, it started out as two weeks and ended up being six weeks. And, and I, at first I thought about saying no. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm 65 years old. I want to, I want to live. I want to live my life fully. So we're going to breathe you guys. So uh, get yourself together and prepare yourself for a beautiful breath session. And tonight I'm going to play um, one of my favorite songs. So I want you to get into position. And most of you know what that means, which is sit back. Trust yourself right now. It's safe to breathe, it's safe to be here. You are in perfect balance. It's safe for you to surrender right now, be in the moment, be present. Be in the moment, be present. I call upon the I am present, the I am presence, masters of light and angelic forces. I call upon the higher self of everyone present here tonight to let go and release their fear and their anxiety and their negative thoughts and know that they are their own safe place. Masters of light, angelic forces, and the great I am presence. I ask you to please give everyone here this evening a clear sign of their connection to their higher self, their beautiful, powerful, positive energy, and the energy of everyone here tonight. understanding that you are always cared for. You are loved and loving. You are in perfect balance with the universe. You are enough. Keep breathing. Breathing in to the count of three through your mouth and then breathing out so you're blowing on a mirror. Breathing in, keeping your mouth open as though your mouth is on a water bottle. Breathing into the count of three and then exhaling so you're blowing on a mirror. I am enough. I am safe. I am calm, I am good energy, I'm God energy. I have everything I need. 
I am present, safe to be in my body, safe to breathe, safe to be in the present moment. I encourage you this week to open your heart to the possibilities in front of you, to be a positive energy source for the people in your life, for your children, for your partner, for the people that you work with. Compliment them, encourage them, love them. When you put that type of energy out there, that's the energy that will mirror back to you. God energy, good energy. I want you to feel the energy from your crown chakra down to your base chakra. It's the energy moving through your body. This is the energy of the universe. It's always there for you. Always there for you to reach out to and embrace. Whenever you're anxious or you're scared or you're negative, you can always go to this space and hold space for yourself. You can hold space for your children. You can hold space for your lovers and your partner and your coworkers. And instead of getting angry or envious or negative and complaining, which we all do, go to this space that you're in right now and say, hey, this is my God energy. And imagine yourself with your arms wrapped around someone that you love and say, I'm holding space for them. I'm gonna hold space. I'm gonna stay calm. I'm gonna take a 10 second to 24 hour time out before I react and respond. How could I respond in a way that might have a positive outcome for myself and the person or the people that I love? How could I react differently than I normally react? How could I underreact instead of overreact? I feel this, this energy in my hands right now and I, I care about all of you so much and I am so honored that, you've sh that you showed up again. Um, please follow me on Let Go with Lucinda, my podcast. Um, I will be back in two weeks from now on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time to share another Zoom call with you. We are working on our new program from Panic to Power. I have an incredible staff of people available helping me. Um, if any of you are interested or want to talk to me about coaching, please feel free to call Darla. And uh, let me throw that number out there real quickly and she can put it up as well. Um, at 419-350-7499. We are gonna be doing another group, you guys. I'm excited to share that with you. So and a group is a situation that is really kind of a great opportunity for all of us. We put six to eight people in a group and we do it on Zoom and it's group coaching. Very affordable, it's a lot of fun. You make great friendships there and I would love for you to join. So if you want information on how to be a guest on my podcast, I'm gonna start interviewing people again or how to do some coaching with me one-on-one -on -one, or how to be part of our group coaching, please call Darla. Thanks, Darla, for putting the number up at 419-350-7499. And I'm not going anywhere for a while, so I'm available for one-on-one um, -on -one coaching and we're gonna be doing group coaching and our new program, it's actually from Panic to Power, the solution should be available after the first of the year. Please come back in two weeks and join me and um and till then stay positive do some of the breath work peace out have a great week and go share your positive energy